Yo guys, what is going on? It is Slayer. Today I'll be showing you how to set up dedicated servers for Plutonium, uh, BO2 Remastered. I went over how to install it in my last video. Today I'll be showing you how to set up your own servers so you can play with friends and or other people and set up trick shotting servers and all this stuff. Now, I'm not going to go super deep into setting up trickshotting servers and specific stuff like that. I'm just going to go over how to actually get the server up and running for people to join. Uh, I might make a video in the future on how to actually set it up and how to customize and all that stuff. But in the meantime, you are going to need one thing, and that is, first off, a host. You're going to need something to host the server. You can use your PC, I'm pretty sure. I, don't, I haven't used my own PC. I do use my own host. Um, if you're looking for hosts, search up VPSs, uh, remote desktop, stuff like that. You could probably find them for very cheap, probably like $15 a month, I would say. And you would have to get that if you want it to run 24 seven. And that's about it. I do have a server. I do have a lot of servers on Plutonium actually. And I'm going to do a little test or a little, a little tutorial on one of my servers and one of my hosts, um, on how to actually set it up. So I'm going to get on my server and I'll show you how to set this up. Alright, so I am on my server, and I'm going to show you how to set this up now. I do already have servers set up on here, it's just I moved it into this little folder up here. And I'm going to redo it just so I could, you know, show it for you guys. So, first thing you're going to need is Plutonium setup. If you do not have Plutonium, you're going to want to download the setup. They did make it so there's no more client download on their website, so you are going to have to install the installer. So if you go to plutonium.pw, scroll down, there's going to be a download button. Just download that, you'll get a little exe. It may be counted as a virus, but I promise you it's not. It's just a setup file. So you're going to open this. You're going to give it maybe like 10 minutes, depending on how good your server is. Mine is actually pretty good, so it'll download really, really quickly. So I'm going to leave that running in the background. And in the meantime, you're going to want a few files. Again, these will all be down listed in the description. You are going to need... Uh, .NET SDK, you're going to need DX Web Express, which is DirectX, and Notepad++ to edit files. Um, all the original downloads to, you know, get these files will be down in the description. They'll be listed and all that stuff. And you want to make sure to install all of these before doing any of the following. Alright, so while this downloads, there's another thing you're going to want to do, and that is open up your firewall. And when you open up your firewall, you want to open up a certain port to allow players to actually connect to your server. And how to do that, you open up firewall, go to advanced settings. And I mean, you could turn off firewall, but you go to your advanced settings, you go to inbound rules. You want to click new rule and give it a second while it loads. You want to go here. You want to go to port. You want to click next UDP. And I'm pretty sure it's three, nine, seven, six. I think let me just check what I have it here no four nine four nine so you want to set it to four nine seven six and you want to actually open this port if you're going to do multiple servers which you can do depending on how good your server is you want to do four nine seven six to like four nine seventy eight depending on how many servers that means this will be two servers if you want to do three you do nine if you want to do four you do eighty so or not eighty yeah eighty you click next and then you'll allow the connection and then you will allow all of these click next type in a name and then open it and you want to do that for outbound outbound rules too so after all of that is set up your plutonium download should be done mine i just i didn't have to do these little setup files so my, my shit is still downloading so just wait a little bit i'll cut the video until it starts actually you know speeding up and stuff but it is downloading a lot quicker if you were to download on a regular computer i'll tell you that but um I'll get back to you guys once this is done downloading. So once the download of files hit about 250 here, it should actually start zooming through these files. Let's see. Yep, there we go. It's going to start speeding through this. And the download will be done as soon. And let's see. Let's see. All right, this will be done in no time. So once this is done, it's almost done. It's zooming through these files. Let's see. You want to have your plutonium folder open. And in the description, there will be... A zip file of setup files for your server just open it up and from here all you have to do is just drag and drop boom <laughs> boom that's it now what you just moved in was two batch files which will start your servers one for multiplayer and one for zombies if you want to host zombies you do zombies multiplayer you do multiplayer and in your t6r folder it actually moved a whole bit of files here you have two CFG files for multiplayer dedicated servers and zombies dedicated servers and then restricted which is for like weapons and stuff i haven't messed with this yet i've only done uh config files for 
multiplayer and zombies so to actually edit this there's a few different ways you can have notepad or notepad plus plus notepad plus plus is easier which is why i included it in the files you have to download so just click edit with notepad plus plus and you'll be prompted with uh, a whole config here now this is pretty self-explanatory it, it describes everything everything has a comment of what it does and what it shows but i guess i'll just skim over this real quick this is the host name the host name is what shows up whenever you refresh the server and it shows like what the server name is called this is the server name so all you want to do is just rename this to whatever so i'll do like up for uh there's color codes right here if you want to color code it so i'll do blue actually no i'll do cyan so i'll do five and i'll do vade slayer yt server why not and i'll make yt like red so up one and i'll make this up five so yt will be red and the rest will be blue so that'll be the name of the server if we scroll down this is the configs for or this is the game configuration for whatever you want it to be if you want it to be tdm you make it tdm uh if you want it to be free for all for example right here dm so you just you know take the t out of there so it'll just be dm now it's going to be free for all if you want it to be uh headquarters you make it hq gun game you put gun and these will actually use the files in the game settings folder these are all the configs for whatever game mode you want so i'm going to set it for free for all for now so just dm and if you scroll down there's a lot of other things you could do here a lot of other things if you want to be a private game you can set it as a password you can add a password to the server the max players that's usually capped at 18 or you know defaulted at 18 and you can set a whole bunch of other things here which i'm not really gonna mess with you could you know mess with this as you go and down here you could add logs uh this is for you know remote control shit Blah, 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 blah. restrict attachments so if you don't want players to use certain attachments you can restrict them and then there's also restricting perks down here it shows the the perk description uh, the perk name and the perk description and all that good stuff if you scroll down you can restrict certain uh certain greed uh oh, fucking wild cards my bad and then of course this is where the maps are if you want to do a certain map you go down here and you change the map here it shows all the map names for every single dlc because plutonium does install every single dlc so right here at the bottom it'll show the map underscore rotate and it'll show all the maps over here this is where it rotates the maps and this is all the maps it goes through as you can see it has every single map here so you just want to you know cut this down a little bit if you want to do certain maps um so there is I don't know if this is only me, but for some reason, whenever I have to change maps, I always have to do it this way, where I have to do the same game mode every time. So I have to do the execute, you know, TDM, config, map, and then the map name. So, for example, if you want to do uh, takeoff and downhill, for example, you would do execute and then dm.config since you are playing free for all and then you would do the map name which will be downhill you just want to copy the map name and just paste it here and then you would actually copy and paste this whole thing oops you would copy and paste this whole thing if you want to do two maps and just paste it right after and then where the downhill is you would just replace it with another map that you want for example studio paste it there and then save the file and that's it and then once that's done you could also if you want you could go into the free for all config if you want to change a few more things and you can actually change the time limit the score limit the round limit all these things you could disable tack inserts if you want by changing or enable tack inserts if you want by changing this to zero which i'm not really gonna do right now but the time limit we could change i guess to like 15 minutes the score limit we could set to like five i guess you know why not and the score per kill we could change to like too. so you can edit all of these things and there's also health somewhere i'm pretty sure uh that might actually be in the, in the regular config not here but exit out of this and actually i think i put 105 yeah oops uh 15 all right so after that all you want to do is go back to your plutonium folder and simply open up multiplayer and it'll show this it'll show the title and then it'll do all of these things and then uh, that's about it you put this aside and in here if you do want to run multiple servers uh in, in the actual if you edit the batch file you could do multiple servers by simply changing well, first the name i guess you just set to whatever you want but the port and the config file so let's say you want to run two servers you could actually change the port of the server to what you did at the beginning when i told you to open the ports so let's say you want to actually open another server let's copy and paste it and let's just rename this as multiplayer 2 and let's edit it let's change the tdm 2 it's not even tdm but fuck it and change the port one up 
and then change the dedicated config file to dedicated2.config, save it, close the file, and then go back to where your configs are, copy and paste the dedicated config file, edit it to what you put in that batch file, so dedicated2.config, so it'll read off of that. And if you want to change it to have different maps, you would go down and do whatever you want, change the maps, let's do like frost and um, uh, turbine, sure. Save it, go back up, and you would change the name of the server if you wanna, if you want to. So I would make it like pink and put two. So it's the second server. Save it, and then go back to your plutonium folder and open up multiplayer two. It'll open up another little console here that'll run another server. And as you can see, it's running on Frost. If we minimize out of this, and if we open up plutonium, we'll see our servers. So I'll get back to you guys once I have plutonium open. Oh, and I forgot to mention this, but to free up some space for your server, if this is using a lot of space, you could actually delete the sound file or the sound folder, and you can also delete the video folder. They are completely unnecessary since you're not actually going to run the game on the server. So if you want to save up a few gigabytes, you could delete both of those folders. All right, so we do have Plutonium open. So if we head over to our server browser, and if we just wait a second for it to load, and let's see, if we search up evade, click space, as you can see the bottom, we have Evade Slayer's YouTube server 2 and Evade Slayer's YouTube server. And as you can see, there's actually people connected for some reason. But if we connect to it, we just load it up. As you can see, we're in a game. Everything's working. This is our custom server. And if you have a host, like I said at the beginning of the video, a remote desktop, this will stay up for 24 hours. Sometimes it will crash, so you may have to manage the server a little bit and give it a little bit of your time. You can't just leave it there all the time and to you know restart or whatever but that's about it if you do want your own servers this is a simple tutorial thank you guys for watching and that's about it i'll see you in the next video peace guys